See, I'm not one of these people who's worried about everything. You got these people around you, the country's full of them now. People walking around all day long, all day long, worried about everything. Worried about the air, worried about the water, worried about the soil. Worried about pesticides, insecticides, food additives, carcinogens, worried about radon gas, worried about asbestos. Worried about saving endangered species. Let me tell you about endangered species, all right? Saving endangered species is just one more arrogant attempt by humans to control nature. It is arrogant meddling. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. Doesn't anybody understand that? Interfering with nature. Over 90%, way over 90% of all the species that have ever lived on this planet, ever lived, are gone. They're extinct. We didn't kill them all. They just disappeared. That's what nature does. They disappear these days at the rate of 25 a day. Regardless of our behavior, I mean, irrespective of how we act on this planet, 25 species that were here today will be gone tomorrow. Let them go gracefully. <laughs> Leave nature alone. Haven't we done enough? We're so self-important. So self-important. Everybody's gonna save something now. Oh, save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. And the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these fucking people kidding me? Save the planet? We don't know how to take care of ourselves yet. We haven't learned how to help one another. We're gonna save the fucking planet? I am getting tired of that shit. I'm tired of fucking Earth Day. I'm tired of these fucking self-righteous environmentalists. I'm tired of these white, liberal, Bourgeois, liberal, white people who think the only thing wrong with this planet is there aren't enough bicycle paths. <laughs> trying to make the world safe and clean for their Volvos. And I'm really sick, really sick of these rock stars and movie stars gonna work off their cocaine guilt by saving a forest somewhere. <laughs> besides, besides, there's nothing, besides, the, first of all, the environmentalists don't give a shit about the planet. They don't care about the planet. Not in the abstract, they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live. Their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might be personally inconvenienced. Narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me. Besides, there's nothing wrong with the planet. The planet is fine. The people are fucked. The people are fucked. Compared to the people, the planet is doing great. The planet has been here for four and a half billion years, all right? Four and a half billion. We've been here, what, 100,000? Maybe. 200,000? Maybe. And we've only been engaged in heavy industry for a little over 200 years. 200 years versus four and a half billion. And we have the conceit to think that somehow we're a threat, that somehow we're gonna put in jeopardy this beautiful little blue-green ball that's just a floating around the sun? Planet has been through a lot worse than us for a long time. Been through earthquakes, volcanoes, plate tectonics, continental drift, solar flare, sunspots, magnetic storms, the magnetic reversal of the poles, bombardments for hundreds of thousands of years by comets and asteroids and meteors, sandstorms, erosion of all kind, cosmic radiation, worldwide fires, worldwide floods, recurring ice ages, and we think, we think some aluminum cans and some plastic bags are going to make a difference? Planet isn't going anywhere. We are. We're going away. We're going away. Pack your shit, folks. We're going away. And we won't leave much of a trace either. Thank God for that. Maybe a little styrofoam. Maybe a little styrofoam. <laughs> Planet will be here and we'll be long gone. Just another failed mutation. Just another closed-end biological mistake. An, 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 an evolutionary cul-de-sac. Planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas. A surface nuisance. <laughs> you want to know how the planet's doing? Ask those people in Pompeii who are frozen into position from volcanic ash. How the planet's doing. Want to know if the planet's all right? Ask the people in Mexico City or Armenia or a hundred other places buried under thousands of tons of earthquake rubble if they feel like a real threat to the planet this week. How about the people in Kilauea, Hawaii, who build their homes right next to an active volcano and then wonder why they have lava in the living room? 
planet is going to be here a long, long, long time after we're gone, and it will heal itself, it will cleanse itself, because that's what it does. It's a self-correcting system. The air and the water will recover, the earth will be renewed, and say, if it's true that plastic doesn't degrade, well, the planet will simply incorporate plastic into a new paradigm, the earth plus plastic. <laughs> The planet doesn't share our prejudice towards plastic. Plastic came out of the Earth. The Earth probably sees plastic as just another one of its children. Could be the only reason the Earth allowed us to be spawned from it in the first place. It wanted plastic for itself. <laughs> Didn't know how to make it. Needed us. Could be the answer to our age-old philosophical question, why are we here? <laughs> plastic. <laughs> Assholes. So, the plastic is here, our job is done, we can be phased out now. And I think that's really started already, don't you? I mean, to be fair, the planet probably sees us as a mild threat, something to be dealt with. And I'm sure the planet will defend itself in, in, in the uh, manner of a large organism, like a beehive or an ant colony can muster a defense. I'm sure the planet will think of something. What would you do if you were the planet trying to defend against this pesky, troublesome species? Let's see, what might, hmm, viruses. Viruses might be good. They seem vulnerable to viruses. And uh, viruses are tricky, always mutating and forming new strains whenever a vaccine is developed. Perhaps this first virus could be one that, that compromises the immune system of these creatures. Perhaps a human immunodeficiency virus making them vulnerable to all sorts of other diseases and infections that might come along. And maybe it could be spread sexually, making them a little reluctant to engage in the act of reproduction. Well, that's a poetic note. And it's a start. And I can dream, can I? I don't worry about the little things. Bees, trees, whales, snails. I think we're part of a greater wisdom than we will ever understand. A higher order. Call it what you want. You know what I call it? The big electron. The big electron. Whoa. 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 It doesn't punish. It doesn't reward. It doesn't even judge. It just is. And so are we, for a little while. Thanks for being here with me for a little while tonight. Thank you. Thank you.